My name is Sebastian Ekberg. I'm the production designer and the producer of this show. I've worked with the, the band for 12 years now, so and this is uh, by far the biggest uh, production. We have worked here before in uh, with a d different kind of uh, setup, but this is uh, we wanted to do something completely new. The band earlier this year they made a film called Umar Sharif. Uh, that's a part of a big concept that we are uh, both like movie and then the live shows. So it's based on this Umar Sharif concept with lots of people, lots of dancers. We always push like uh, the bar for what what's possible for us to make. And um, what you see now is just a glass box and then it, the frosted glass will turn transparent and then you will see uh, people, you will see stages uh, like uh, desert uh, sand uh, on top. And then we now we're working with the, like a quick change over to a garden with lots of flowers and everything. The artists, they're creating kind of much more than a concert. They create like a universe. Everything is a part of a much bigger story. We all have a lot of companies in here. Main company is Spectre. They deliver the lights and uh, trussing. They are having an important collaboration with the Hof that they're making this uh, glass uh, box. The collaboration with Hof is really important for us. We always want to do something that's never been done before. And uh, with the company as Hof, they are really helping us getting there. My name is Terje Vam. I'm a project manager for Spectre for this event. We're delivering all the rigging, the lights, and a lot of the design. We've been cooperating with the band and try to make a magic moment there in Spectrum. Our first challenge was uh, the loads, because we have a massive rig with this uh, cube in the middle and uh, all of the technical stuff in uh, such a small space. It's around 80 metric tons in uh, 12 by 12 meters, and that's a uh, quite heavy load for the roof. That was our first challenge. Secondly, it's a 360 production that is quite challenging for the band. We have worked very closely with the Hof when they first presented them for the idea of this cube. They started drawing and uh, had a can happen, can't happen situation. After some weeks, they gave us the thumbs up and uh, we started working with that concept. It's now actually a little bit smaller when we, uh, than when we first started, uh, but uh, a little bit more complex with this uh, diffusion film and and the penetration of the subarray. I've known Hoff since 2014, when Body first started to work with Hoff. They're great uh, engineers, they have a very open mind, and I think they really like to get challenged on these kind of uh, jobs. So it has been a real pleasure to work with them. First, the limb is unused, the truss is in other ways, and it's usually used. And, uh, and they have helped us a lot with this plexiglass, uh, which isn't a part of their portfolio. I think uh, Hof has been a very important part of this, uh, because this has been so important, this centerpiece, and uh, how that is rigged and how the look will be. So the cooperation with Hof has been very, very important. We need quick responses and uh, accurate calculations, and uh, they have really been there for us. So we are very happy with that. We already built a flying stage here for the band Carpe at the Spectrum Hall, where we are. And um, yeah, this year we go bigger as the last time. And uh, now we have a frozen looked cube here with plexi plates and uh, a diffusion film where you can switch like glass-like or in a frozen look. I'm Matthias Wehrmeier and I'm the head of sales at Hof Alutech. I have been charged with the planning of the flying stage here in Oslo. We are here with three supervisors to assemble the construction. We have planned and uh, built a flying stage, uh, so more it's a flying cube, with a hub of approximately 12 by 12 by 3.5 meters. The first part is listen to the customer, what are your needs and what are your dreams, what can you imagine, and uh, then we make a few scratches with Vectorworks and after this, when we are uh, ready for the construction and uh, to build all the stuff, then we uh, make a drawing with SolidWorks. So the planning phase was uh, around about two months and after that uh, we had the challenge 
to get all the trusses ready and uh, stuff like that because we don't have so much aluminum and steel and stuff like that in the market at the moment so it was uh, really struggling to get all the profiles uh, in time to our company that we can weld all the trusses so that was a really big challenge as well as the complete static of the of the project as you may know we have to use as many hoists as possible we start assembling the top platform uh, beside of the end position of it and we use for this the MLT2 dollies. When we are ready with the top, at the same time the riggers do all the rigging stuff, put in the hoist and stuff like that. And uh, when they are ready, we are ready to push the whole construction on his right position. And that saves a lot of time and uh, it was really quite easy, so it was good that we have uh, yeah, the MLT2 dollies here for this construction. So the, the main products were the MLT2, as yeah, the strongest truss in the whole construction. Um, for the side walls and as well for the top grid, uh, we used our Hofbold 200-2 grid truss and a special version of our Hofork 354 truss. In the special 354 truss uh, we welded uh, some hanging points inside of the truss to save some uh, space to the top. After the assembling the whole construction weighs about 12 tons including lamps, technology and stuff like that. So we had the challenge that we don't uh, put too much weight on the whole construction and into the rooftop. So we used 20 mm plexi plates for the top side and 10 mm plates on the side walls because uh, the top side has so much load forces inside as the band carpe is yeah, jumping on it and stuff like that. The side walls are made completely with a 200-2 grid truss system. It was a slight easy way to fix all the plexi plates and the side plexi plates within the truss. Everyone worked yeah, hand in hand. Uh, it's a nice atmosphere here uh, with all the companies. We have already started in 2017 uh, with Spectra. This year it was as well a pleasure to work with them together. It was a really nice, nice uh, venue here at uh, Spectra. My name is uh, Lars Morten Larsen, I'm from the design company Filament uh, and I'm the head lighting designer for this production. So here we can see the uh, X4 bars being mounted both at the bottom and at the top of the cube and we can also see the uh, frosted glass being mounted there on sp special brackets. So uh, the foil here actually consists of a thin layer of an extra plastic foil that's getting powered from uh, some power units in the top here and uh, makes us able to uh, switch the opacity on and off. So inside here we have some fixtures to uh, uh, light both on the stage floor and also inside the cube. We have some uh, auras and uh, we have some uh, Chauvy R1 to colorize and uh, make effects on the stage floor and uh, also of course uh, light up the frosted glass from the inside. So we use both the X4 bars uh, tilting upwards and uh, both the R watch to light up the whole cube. The glass cube can uh, be uh, raised and lowered uh, through the show. That makes us able to do uh, pretty big changes on the, uh, on the stage floor during the show and also reveal new views and new layouts for the audience as well to see different designs and different moods through the show. The light design of uh, this rig is uh, built up with uh, several features that uh, has a huge amount for a Norwegian production. Um, we have uh, centered a lot of the fixtures in the center of the rig, uh, mostly because we want to make the whole cube and the whole, uh, the whole focus in the center of the arena. We um, have been back and forth and trying different solutions with having a lot of lights out in the audience and make the whole arena light up, but uh, together with the artist and uh, also with the rest of the production uh, design team, we have ended up with um, centering a lot of this equipment. That makes us uh, makes it a lot of challenges for us because it's harder to make positions for especially for lighting and also levels of the lighting has to be adjusted uh, from fixture to fixture to make the whole cube and also the different fixtures um, light up in the best way. We have uh, several different fixtures in the rig. We have uh, the X4 bar. Uh, we have uh, Chauvy Strike M strobes and we have uh, both uh, Robbie Pointy and uh, Mega Pointy in the rig. All the fixtures have different uh, ways of being used throughout the gig. Uh, I often like to use the beam lights and, um, and the spots for parts that has pretty heavy and, uh, and hard beats to mark and everything, every part in the music. 
and uh, the X4 bars makes really nice air aerials in the smoke and uh, for me it's uh, this kind of uh, genre and this kind of songs, uh, the X4 bar is really nice because you can both make them pretty straight lines and make the nice waves in the air, but also uh, zoom them full out and make really nice glow effects with just uh, small pixels, uh, have different chases in uh, all, both low and uh, high speeds. And now the cube is uh, lifted up and uh, stage floor is being built. As you can see now, the glass is in the uh, clear mode and uh, yeah, so you can see the X4 bar is um, uh, marking out the lines uh, around the cube. We have uh, both at the top, they are a bit angled to be able to shoot directly down here. And we also have it 360 all the way around. And um, you can also see our uh, pods that we call uh, in the top here with the pointies and uh, mega pointies. And um, also the strike amps. They're going to be used um, pretty much like this to be angled out to the audience um, and be work as heavily, heavily um, blinders and uh, also give that extra stroke punch that we need on uh, some of the songs. And in the center here we have uh, one uh, BMFL that's um, the only purpose of it is actually to just um, outline the uh, lifting table when it's being used and uh, also to be able to have one center in the spot. My name is Jochen Sommer. I work for a company from Canada called Adamson Systems Engineering. Uh, the company builds loudspeaker systems and we're supporting the carpet production uh, here at Spectrum Oslo uh, with the design and uh, setup of their PA system. The design evaluated and developed over several iterations uh, from its initial plans to uh, where it is right now but uh, one of the the elements that was was a central part of this design early on was the uh, the cube which obviously set some firm physical uh, benchmarks for uh, where PA was able to go on top of that it's a, a 360 degree production so our design needed to, uh, to cater to that as well the main system for this show uh, comprises of eight clusters, of which uh, six using E-series cabinets. We call them L1 and R1 are uh, six E15 over uh, nine E12s, and then L2, R2 and L3, R3 are uh, nine E15 over six E12. Uh, the rear clusters, um, L4 and R4, are 12 S10 each. Um, the placement of these clusters was originally derived from a design where on top of the cube they also had um, additional uh, video elements which were uh, removed in the meanwhile, but that's where uh, the positioning of these uh, clusters uh, originates from. An element that was in the making for a, a very long time was where uh, the subwoofers would go. We end up with a placement that's actually quite preferable uh, in many situations since we have one source um, all the way in the center where we have uh, arranged four clusters with eight E119 subs each in a tight packed fashion. This was important uh, for two reasons. Number one, to have a source that is as compact uh, as possible, but number two, also because the cube uh, moves up and down, so the footprint that this uh, arrangement was allowed to occupy uh, was very limited. Also on the subcluster, um, to have a bit um, of additional front fill coverage, we have uh, four clusters uh, with 3S10 each um, in a custom rigging arrangement directly underneath the E119s. To complete the design, we will have a total uh, of 24 E219 subs in two high front-back cardioid stacks uh, around the stage and 16 uh, S7P boxes as lip fills. To work with Carpe is really interesting because we have um we work a lot together, we sit together, we travel together, see shows, go to theatres, go to lots of uh, places to get ins inspiration. And then uh, it's a full-time job basically for me and uh, has been there, that for quite a lot of years. They are really pushing the bar to do something new.